Hi, this is Danielle with Cookie.com, and I'm here to talk about the Responsive Scroll Effects widget. This widget utilizes the same concepts of Muse's Scroll Effects features without the limits of a fixed width page, so it's a powerful tool with familiar techniques for Muse users. Now you can apply beautiful effects to your responsive content on fluid width pages. And with two handles, the widget gives you the opportunity to have an effect for three different situations of before, between, and even after handles that you can place anywhere on the page. So you can fully control the scroll speed, direction, and opacity all within this one tool. In these examples, you can watch the widget being used on things like images and backgrounds for traditional parallax effects. Or you can see the handles in action as each tab scrolls into the page, holds its place, and then exits the page as the end handle enters. With this one widget, you can create unlimited scroll effects, and so let's go check it out in Muse. To begin, I'm going to start up my Muse page by adding in the main that has to be on every page that has a handle. Let's add this to this corner and give ourselves some space to scroll. I'm going to give it about 5,000 pixels, and that will be plenty of space, as you can see. Now I can make it a fluid width and add in some content. I'll be using a text box for this example. So now I have my content and it's ready to go. I can go to my library panel and add in my handles. When adding in your handles, make sure to have enough space in between them so that they don't appear on the browser at the same time. For this example, I'm going to be adding in some markers on the page so that we can see when the handles enter and exit the page. Perfect. Now let's name them. So go to Hyperlinks, Tooltip, and give it a simple name without any special characters or any spaces. It's also case sensitive. And now I'm going to add that same name onto the widgets. Great. So let's start with the Start Option panel. This holds all of the information for the scroll effects. These values use 1 as the normal scroll speed. Using 2 would make the object scroll double the normal scroll speed, while 0.5 would make it move at half the normal scroll speed. To make objects move right and up, use positive values, and to move left and down, use negative values. This first section is when the Start handle has not reached the top of the browser yet. Between the two handles is after the Start handle has passed the top of the browser, and then after the finish handle enters is when the finish handle has entered from the bottom of the browser. For this effect, I want to move the object left, then make it stay in place for between the two handles, and then I want it to move back towards the right. So I'm going to input those values, 0, 0 to make it stay, and then back towards the right with 0.5. Now if I check the opacity box, the default values make it go from 0% opacity to 100% opacity and then back to 0% opacity over a 200 pixel transition gap. That transition gap is before and after the finish handle and it ensures a smooth transition depending on this value. The layer order can override a page's layering and is especially helpful when you're using a scroll effect for items like menus and navigations, but otherwise normal will do fine for the layer order. And now we can go ahead and preview. As I scroll down the page, you don't see anything because the object's at 0% opacity. Then the start handle enters the page, and after 200 pixels reach between the top of the browser and the start handle, it moves from 0% opacity to 100% opacity after the start handle reaches the top of the browser. It stays in place. And then as soon as the finish handle enters from the bottom of the browser, it moves back towards the right. After 200 pixels after the finish handle, it gets to 0% opacity. So that was the basic overview of the scroll effects widget. Tune into the extended video for more details on controlling your page's scroll effects, and make sure to check out the documentation for any other information you may need about this widget. This is Danielle with Cookie.com, and thanks for watching.